Now to address the work holding with this, what I did was I bolted the casting to this uh, angle block, okay, and I just snugged it up uh, so it was it was square against this one, but yet it could pivot this way because if the spindle is going down this way, it needs to be uh, perpendicular <clears throat> this way and this way um, in order to ground you know perpendicular to this face. So I have it bolted against here, okay? So we know that it's square this way, and now I have this guy right here pressed up against here and I used a, um, a flashlight to check the light make sure it was as perfect as I can possibly get it to take care of this so and what I did was if you could see over here I used these pins these are uh, precision pins that are ground hardened and ground I got one here and one over here and that you know that allowed it to support it up and allow for the pivoting so I got it bolted down and uh, and I got it um, squared up on, on both planes. So let me try to get you in here and you can see. Alright, so now I got my my mag light and we're trying to see if we could see any light coming through. And it's a little tricky to do with the camera, but what I can do is I can turn this a little bit to open it up. Move past the... there's a bunch of holes on the face of this square block now you can see it's tight up there and it opens up a little bit down here see there's a gap right there so there's some fine adjustment that still needs to take place alright so as we can see we got a little bit more work to do to, to, uh, to really fine tune this so I'm gonna do that off camera because it might take a while and then I'll get you back once it's done and once we're ready to uh, grind this edge so I've dialed this in as best as I possibly can. Now, just by nature of, of bolting uh, a casting to a, a angle block with one small thin bolt and a bunch of washers, this is very challenging to get to be perfect and then to tighten it in and get it dead set. So I got it near perfect, but there I noticed the slightest, tiniest little gap. So what I done was I got this tissue paper here uh, this is stuff that you find like you know in a Christmas present or something um, and I just put it right on the edge here and what it did is it lifted it up and was able to close up the gap now this is as best as I can possibly get it with what I have here in the shop um, I'm confident that it's it's real good especially for the type of tool that it is a spindexer so again we have it we have it squared this way and we have it squared this way uh, as well as these two edges being parallel. So we're going to go for the grind now and that should do it. As you can see, I'm sparking out to nothing, which tells me that it was, uh, it was sitting low. Alright, we just got done with it, got it down, we're going to take it off, uh, we're going to check to see if it stayed in square, run some indicators on it and give it a, a once over. See, this is a bit of a crude method here, but again, it's it's really all I have.
Now, when I run an indicator on this, this should not be parallel to the face on the bottom. Okay, because I haven't ground that yet. So, I'm going to get an indicator hooked up and we're going to see. Now again, nothing should nothing should be parallel. That yeah, there's a huge sweeping difference. Let me uh, let me position the camera and show you. All right, looks pretty good. Now away we go. See, there's a huge linear deflection, which is what we're looking for. Well, not what we're looking for, but we're just kind of proving a theory. So this bottom, the this top is ground level now and square, but the bottom section isn't. All right, uh, the bottom checks out, the sides check out, everything everything checks out um, in terms of the sides and the bottom uh, square to the back face. Uh, now we just got to grind. <clears throat> uh, we just got to grind the top now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mount this the way it is and clean the clean the face and we should be good to go. And what I'll do is I will I'll do this off camera. There's been so much grinding footage nobody needs to see any more of that. So I'll mount it up, I'll dust it off, clean it and uh and we'll come back and we'll take a final measurement before we assemble it. The casting just got off the grinder. Took a stone to all the corners. Uh, I measured it for parallel, and it's parallel again within you know within a tenth everywhere you go. Sometimes there's just no detectable movement whatsoever. Right? What is that? Three point eight. Three point eight. Three point seven. Three point seven. 3.7, move in, 3.5 and a half, I'm calling it done. <clears throat> we're level here, uh, we're square here, perpendicular to the spindle here, we're perpendicular this way, this way, and the two sides are perpendicular to the spindle. So. We're officially done with uh, grinding and squaring this this base up. I think what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the little shoe that's going to sit in here and help bind this without marring up the spindle. Now to get a precise measurement of this hole, I'm going to just use a little pin gauge to find something that fits in, you know, relatively tight but loose enough for it to travel. I like that. You know what? 475 it will be. <clears throat> Alright, I got this little piece of brass here. It's uh, one inch over here and about three quarters over here. So, simple little turn down and we'll be on our way. I'm using this new um, BXA CNMG holder using these um, Sandvik free insert free samples. These things are nice, real nice. So let's get an initial measurement and see where we're at. Seven thirty. Seven. <clears throat> 
50 thousandths more. Alright, we got our diameter turned down, we just need to drill the through hole. So like before, this is a this is a number five drill, and it's just a simple through hole. That's all. I think my uh, chuck was seated correctly. Had a little slip to it. All right. Put a little chamfer. And actually, I'm going to take a little skim graze coat. Hold on. Let me turn the power feed off here. It's making an awful amount of noise. I'm going to just take a quick little facing cut. our little shoe. <clears throat> and there she is. Little tiny shoe to protect our spindle of our very expensive spindexer. ain't going to go in there, but this will just sit right here on the tip and protect our spindle. Alright, let's go put the spindexer back together now. Alright, we're all done now. We got our little shoe made. We got our, our binding nut made. We got our ring that attaches the indexing plate to this. We got our, our base is ground. We have holes drilled. We did a lot. This was a this was a great project, and I'll tell you, I, I learned a lot about grinding and um, you know just getting down into that next level of precision. So let's, let's put a little bit of oil here on the spindle, a little light oil, just a little bit. Now I got a T-shirt on my granite plate here. Um, some people commented like. You know, you shouldn't use your granite plate to assemble anything, and you know they're right. This is a precision tool as well, so you want to try to protect it as best as possible. Alright, we'll put our little locking ring on. Yeah, this thing always walks. Alrighty. We'll put our shoe in. We'll just let it touch down. Now the thing is, is it's it, it's such a close tolerance that it has to be completely straight for it to uh, to move. And if it you know if it gets canted a little bit, it kind of locks in there, which is good because it won't fall out then. And it stays seated, drops perfectly in there. We put our screw in, and let me tell you, this thing this thing binds. Watch, I'll spin this. Let me turn this. I'll spin this, and it's like instant breaks. And that brass really, you know, it kind of crushes down a little bit, and it has superior, superior holding power. And I'm glad, I'll tell you, I'm glad I made the nut a little bit, a, a little bit taller and bigger with the, 
you know, with the good knurls on it, you get a good, a good bite on it. And there we go. Our Spindexer is back. It's better than ever. And, um, you know, for 35 bucks, I guess you can't beat it in a little bit of work. So, just want to say, if you have a surface grinder and you got these tools, um, you know, improve what you have if you can. And, you know, don't let, uh, don't let the, the, uh, complicatedness of this <laughs> deter you, you know, it takes a little bit of work, but you can figure it out and you can get it done and, and that's, uh, that's a good thing. All right, well, until next time, thanks a lot and see you on the next one.